welcome back to my YouTube channel. In case you're new here, my name is Sharon and I create content around my passion for the science of beauty and wellness. I actually have an entire website dedicated to this. So in case you're interested, make sure to sign up to my newsletter so that you get all of my latest updates and content sent straight to your mailbox. In today's video, this is actually the first of my Skincare 101 series and I thought that it would be best to start by laying a foundation and understanding how our skin is structured so that we can be able to build a skincare routine efficiently. So I will be leaving timestamps in the description box and in the comment down below so you can skip forward to the part that suits you best. So let's begin. So the first thing we need to understand is what exactly is the skin barrier. Our skin is actually made up of two main layers. We have the epidermis and the dermis. And these two layers sit on top of a fatty layer and a connective tissue. So these layers are also broken down into more layers. But what we're going to focus on is the topmost layer of the epidermis, which is called the stratum corneum. The stratum corneum is what people usually refer to as the skin barrier or the moisture barrier. So the stratum corneum is made up of different components. So one is the cells of the stratum corneum, which are just called the corneocytes. And these corneocytes are replaced on a regular basis by the deeper layers of the skin. So that's why we have a regular turnover of skin cells. And this happens actually every 28 days. The second component of the stratum corneum is the lipid matrix. So lipids are just fats. So it's a fatty layer that's made up of some cholesterol, free fatty acids, and ceramides. The third component of the stratum corneum is something called the natural moisturizing factor. So actually this is just a group of water-soluble compounds that help the skin to maintain its hydration. So the natural moisturizing factor is made up of different things like the, some amino acids. Amino acids are just um, the smallest unit of a protein. We have some lactate or lactic acid, citrate, urea, and um, sugars, a bunch of different sugars, including the famous hyaluronic acid, which we'll be talking about more in future videos. So when you combine the corneocytes, natural moisturizing factor, and the lipid matrix, those three are what comprise of a good moisture barrier. So since we're talking about the skin, I know most people tend to focus only on the facial skin, but I think it's important to understand what the difference is between our facial skin and the skin in the, on the rest of our body uh, because products are dif uh, formulated differently depending on the part of our body. So the first and probably more obvious one is the skin thickness. So obviously the skin on our face is not as thick as say the skin on our palms and our soles of the feet. Actually our palms and our soles of the feet have thicker skin because they are more prone to friction and abrasion so they're thicker and then like the skin say under the eye and on our, our, our necks is much thinner than even other parts of our face. So knowing that means you need to handle the different parts that are more delicate with more gentleness with more care the second major difference is the oiliness so different parts of the skin have a different number of glands that produce our natural oil which is called sebum so the sebaceous glands on our face are actually more than most other parts of our body we also have uh, a bit more sebaceous glands um, on our chest and our back that's why they tend to be prone to acne the sebum is actually very very important it lubricates our skin of course and it also has some uh, antimicrobial properties so it's able to fight against infections another difference is uh, the number of glands and when i talk about glands now i'm not talking about sebaceous glands i'm talking about sweat glands so sweat glands the specific ones that are found in like our groin and under our arms they are called apo apocrine glands so whatever the, the sweat they produce, it actually doesn't have a foul smell, but when it interacts with the bacteria that naturally lives on our skin is when we create an odor. So that's why deodorant exists and antiperspirant. Another difference is the amount and the type of hair that's on our face versus our bodies. So actually we have 
a higher number of hair follicles on our face but the type of hair is so fine so you can barely see it when say compared to our back we have less hair on our backs and so understanding this is also important because there are certain conditions that tend to be more common when in the hair follicles so folliculitis is something you'll most likely experience on your scalp or on your face where there are more hair follicles so those are just a few key differences between the facial skin and the skin on our body um actually i found a very detailed post by userin a skincare brand and i'll link it in the blog post for you to read up more they've done an extensive post on the difference between our face and our body and how to use different products for it so the key takeaway is that our face generally needs hydration yes but more importantly it is very delicate so it should be handled with care and we should use products that are good for sensitive skin while our bodies are thicker but they tend to be drier as well so what your body really needs above all else is hydration so the next thing i wanted to address is actually the difference between um, male and female skin because i know i see often on social media women are complaining that men use five-in-one products a product for their hair their face their bodies and yet they don't have pimples while women just read the word pimple and break out so i thought it would be interesting to also uh, mention a few differences between the skin of male and females so one key difference is actually that um men have thicker skin literally which is probably why they can use the worst products on their skin and somehow it handles it much better than women do so men have been reported to produce more sebum than women and to have larger pores so the sebum production is actually linked to their higher testosterone le levels which is why during uh, puberty uh, boys will have really bad acne breakouts and so their higher sebum production is also what makes them more prone to acne and if they were to get acne it tends to be worse than it would be for women i mentioned that men's skin is thicker than women for both men and women for everyone our skin thins gradually over time like over the years it gets thinner and thinner due to the natural aging process and all the products we use on our skin but for men it actually remains fairly constant like the the skin thinning is quite gradual while for women it will be cool until we hit the 40s or you know early 50s and menop menopause comes through and then the thinning becomes much faster than for men so really in short <laughs> everything goes downhill after menopause for women because estrogen is a very protective hormone in many many ways so um no offense to anyone who's watching this and is menopausal i love you you're beautiful don't worry about small small science there are ways to you know handle your skin post menopausal and be successful with it so one of the major things that actually messes our skin barrier the most is cleansers harsh soaps are known to strip the skin of its lipids its moisturizing factors and once you dry your skin barrier out and weaken it over time this is what causes it to thin out to become damaged and become more prone to irritation and to breakouts and make it more sensitive even to all these external uh, exposures that it's usually able to fight against so being careful about what cleansers you're using on your face is very very important another thing that affects our skin barrier is ph and this is something i've mentioned before the ph of our skin is naturally slightly acidic somewhere between i mean there are different values depending on where you read it from but somewhere between 4.5 and 5.5 so it's been proven that if your skin is not at the right ph then it's not able to fight the environmental toxic agents as well and even to heal it takes longer to heal and recover from any damage it experiences than if it was at the right ph so also ph in products matters a lot the third thing that can damage the skin barrier is uv rays so uv rays uh, have the ability to actually penetrate the skin and damage our dna 
which is why we should wear sunscreen because um, UV rays not only make us age quicker but they also increase the risk of skin cancer we should not only be wearing sunscreen but also just protecting ourselves and limiting our sun exposure is a very important aspect of protecting your skin barrier so one of them is application of creams and ointments that contain the right lipids or lipid like substances cholesterols triglycerides which are components of the skin barrier have been shown to actually help with repairing the skin barrier even hydrocarbons which are one of the most popular ones is petrolatum that's found in many many skincare products has been shown to repair the skin barrier and reverse the damage that's been done and that's why some people swear by using you know vaseline on their faces but again we'll talk about that when i'm addressing moisturizing in a separate video so topical creams have their place which is why choosing the right moisturizer is very important in your routine just like what i mentioned before simply avoiding what damages your skin barrier can improve the skin barrier's condition so that means again choosing a gentle cleanser products at the right ph and use of sunscreen all of these things are known to improve the skin barrier greatly over time in the upcoming posts in the skincare series i'll be doing a deep dive on cleansing moisturizing and sunscreen which to me are the most important aspects of a good skincare routine both for your face and for your body additional steps like toning exfoliation serums masks they have you know additional benefits and they have their place in a skincare routine but if you're not careful they may often do more harm than good and so understanding and catering to just what your skin needs can save you so much time and money you know in the long run i'm a firm believer in the less is more approach so you might find that uh, the answer to your skincare problems actually will come from eliminating products instead of adding products so i hope that with this series and the posts that come that you may understand the ingredients so that you can learn how to choose products wisely and be a smart consumer because once you're able to do that you can sift through a bunch of different brands because the truth is I, I cannot review all the great skincare brands that are out there for you neither can i sift through all the bad ones that i should tell you not to use but if you have the knowledge of what to look out for then the power is in your hands i think also it will help you to see through all the gimmicks that many companies use you will be able to understand what is just a marketing stunt and what is the real deal so that's it for this video i do hope that it was uh, helpful leave a comment down below letting me know how you liked it and any questions you'd like for me to answer in the future videos make sure to share this video with someone who might benefit from it and thank you so much for watching always remember that your hair is your crown and your body is a temple embrace it love it and take care of it god bless you all bye